So what is the current problem? With over 500 skyscrapers projected to be completed in London over the next decade, buildings sealed by glass that are already prevalent across the city will continue to dominate our built environment. In a climate emergency, these buildings will not be economically or environmentally viable. All glass, large-scale mass buildings are too difficult and expensive to cool. They require a lot of energy to cool them down, and using a lot of energy equates to a lot of carbon emissions. Glass-fronted offices from high-profile buildings have become popular with architects and their clients, but the sunlight also brings in heat and in sealed buildings there is nowhere for it to escape naturally. And what can we do about it? Using 25 Shoe Lane, the headquarters for Goldman Sachs, as a case study, we will be excavating the building using natural ventilation as a driving force in design decisions. Rules informed by the ventilation strategies will dictate the design, whilst our key strategies of air, energy, waste and reuse and the changing workforce will create a truly flexible building. Using Plumtree Court as a case study, an example of the many other sealed glass office developments that have been and continue to be built, we can begin to examine how other sites may be adapted and future developments can integrate a more passive means of ventilation, allowing the building to become a better citizen. The global context of the site and how we got here. Hoban Viaduct opened in 1869. The site's existing single entity mass footprint can be traced back to World War II, where the previous fine grain of terraced houses, as evident in the 1880s, was subject to bomb damage. We begin then to look at the origins of the office and the history of the Clean Air Act. How did this, alongside the growth of capitalism, lead to deep plan buildings? How has land assembly had an impact on our site? What is the future of the office and how will policy change the air quality? Our building, 25 Shoe Lane, is situated in Plumtree Court in Farringdon. The local context in which the building sits within the City of London is specifically the Farringdon Without Ward. It is one of commercial, industrial and ecological value, situated in close proximity to the Bank of America, the London Stock Exchange and several law firms. The diversification of office working will also change the way offices have historically dominated this part of the city. The technical parameters for our environment first approach are as follows. First, we retain the existing structure. Then we retain the existing cores. Then we retain the fragments of glass from the existing facade and we introduce granularity. Facade strategies will be applied depending on solar needs. Each facade will have a different treatment while the north can be retained. Atria will provide and distribute cooled air from the labyrinth to be distributed across floor plates. They will serve five times the height of the building with stacked ventilation. Chimneys will remove exhaust air from internal spaces. They must be no more than 12 metres from spaces and 10 metres from the south facade. They will be 5 metres squared each. Material used for the labyrinth will come from the excavated atria. The length of the labyrinth will be dependent on how many blocks of the same size are extracted. Our strategy for the ground floor plan, we are retaining the existing cores and creating an internal street. We will break open the plan at ground floor, opening new spaces to the public. The once steep and wide building footprint is now broken down into a series of small units that are much finer grain, providing a number of amenities. The cores that remain will provide key access to the upper floors of Shoe Lane. Through the excavation of this building's makeup, we are left with material that needs to be reused. This has directly informed our design process, as very few new materials will be introduced into this proposal. The material strategy is focused on achieving environmental and social objectives, whilst championing reuse of the current facade. 
The existing glazing will be retained, but set back from the facade line by 1.5 meters, allowing for a zone of shading fins formed of the salvaged raised access floor to be stripped from the plan. The high quality stone currently forming a plinth at ground level will be remodeled into a series of arches, whilst leftover stone and glass will be used for balustrades on the southeast and southwest corner terraces. A series of atria have been explored to lead the final proposal to show several atria varying in size and depth that bring cooled air from the basement into the building. These atria will be capped and therefore the air reaching internal spaces will be controlled. The ground floor has been broken down into much smaller units, cut into chunks as a result of reinstating the streets. The units vary in size to provide flexibility for potential occupants. As well as introducing new commercial units, the opening up of the ground floor means new public facilities can be provided, as now the ground floor is accessible to all. With a ban on diesel and petrol cars and a growth in the number of cyclists, the activity is further encouraged to spill out onto the streets. The proposed section highlights the spatial consequences of our excavating, allowing for more valuable high quality spaces which benefit from their new dual aspect. There is constant communication and conversation between the lively public realm and floors above, speculating a myriad of potential uses. The south facade terraces could become shared amenity to residential units, providing places to meet, rest and play in the shade. The atria that carved through the once deep plan bring freshly cooled air into the spaces, with opportunities for occupants to have agency over their air and environment. Similarly, Balconies on the west facade are shaded by manually operated fins, introducing spaces with variable privacy and shading, dependent on the user's preferences. The building once deep in plan, sealed and isolated from the rest of the city, now rejects the 9 to 5 Monday to Friday working pattern. Bringing people into new public spaces, it is a friendly building that is responsive to its context, the climate and the people that occupy it.